Today I want to take a look at the PowerShell commandlet out-file. And this will take the output of the console and save it to a text file. Very simple, useful, and one we should all know about. It does have a number of switches and parameters. The most important is going to be the file path of where we're saving the file itself. But we also have switches for encoding, append, the width, no new line, a couple of different things. Force, which is for overwriting a file. Force and append, we see these show up in other output commandlets, but a couple of these are a little different with the width, no new line, encoding. There's a few things that are unique, so I wanted to go through and do an example. The out file commandlet sends output directly to a text file and uses PowerShell's formatting system the same display representation as the terminal. So it may not be ideal for programmatic processing, but it's pretty good for legibility because it matches the familiar format we have on the console. We'll start with the first example, which sends output and creates a file. We can see our command is get process without file and provides a file path. And then we get the content to see what the content looks like. Process objects are sent to the pipeline, and the file path parameter creates a file in the current directory. All right, we'll go ahead and execute that one so we can see the results. Over here, we have a PowerShell ISE, and we'll do a dollar $host, version 5.1. We'll go ahead and execute the highlighted part with the F8 key, and then we'll do the get content of process.txt. So essentially, that's the same as the get process command, but it's coming from a text file. And we are able to execute the command by itself if we wanted to see that part. And get content displays it. Personally, I kind of like viewing this sort of data within Notepad. So if we were to open that, we can come in here and see Notepad++ and do things with like zoom and word wrapping and you know, find any matching patterns. And I personally find the data a little bit easier to read in Notepad++. So you can see there's a blank line kind of introduction here before we get the column headings next and everything's kind of fixed width column distance so whereas you know CSV is using a comma to separate these are more number of characters on a fixed width basis so that is the default example one for example two prevent an existing file from being overwritten uh, by default uh, out file will overwrite existing files. So no clobber will give us a, essentially a blocking warning that says the file is already there. So if we come in here and we do very similar command, but now we're adding no clobber, that means do not overwrite because the file is already there. That's actually the opposite of dash force, which is going to make it overwrite. So sometimes you want force where you are going to be overwriting or no clobber where you want to avoid overwriting. For example three, we'll take a look at sending output to a file in ASCII format. So this is kind of interesting because we provide encoding and width. And these are two parameters that not all output commands are going to support. Let's take a look at example three and execute. So we're going to get process, same as before. We can echo our variable to take a look at it. So we're saving to a variable. And then we can out to a file path, providing the input object and the parameters. Now one thing about this, we're giving it input object in the center of the command as one of the parameters and switches. Now, of course, you can provide it on the left-hand side with the input pipeline. So traditionally, you're going to see things with pipeline, uh, kind of like we have down here on lines 11 and lines 4. Um, and that's, that's kind of the standard way you're going to see this particular function used. But it is possible to do dash input object and provide as a parameter if you want to go that way too. So we'll go ahead and execute this one. There we are. And if we do, we'll say notepad again for dot process txt. Yes. So here we have the file reloaded. And it looks a little bit different. The columns are slightly different. The width, the spacing. You can see there's sort of some additional spacing happening here. And that goes to our width parameter that was provided. And the encoding is ASCII, which kind of goes to character set. If you're going to have special symbols, it reduces it down, which might make it easier to import for other systems if those other systems support 
ASCII, and really that becomes a downstream read operation with who else is going to be reading the text file that we're creating. Example 4 uses a provider and sends output to a file. So this is a little bit different usage, and we're going to go ahead and navigate with set location, get location, get the child item, and then out to a file path, what that is going to look like. The set path sets the current location to alias colon, and the get displays the complete path. Uh, the child objects are sent through the pipeline and saved into aliasnames.txt. So this is kind of an interesting one. It's going to tell us about the PowerShell alias that we have available on the console. So we're going to set our location to alias colon and run a get location. And then this is get child item and it's piping it to outfile. Now what I like to do is highlight F8, execute the command by itself. What's the data look like? You know, can we preview and, and interact and work with the data before we write it to a file. And that's a pretty good debug method. You can highlight what's left of the pipeline, highlight what's right of it, kind of execute things in smaller steps. And if you have a, a very large one-liner, that definitely can pay off. I'm going to change the folder path here to something this machine has available. And we'll go ahead and execute, which wrote the file. And then we can do our get content, see the data coming back. And again, for myself, I like to do notepad and provide the path. So now I can see all the data coming back. And this is a list of all the different alias that are on the system. And we have a text file, 164 lines. Now there are some blanks at the ending. There's a blank row at the beginning. And this is easier to read in Notepad++ than on the get content of the console in my mind. I mean, there, there are blank lines here, but it's not really easy to call those out. So that's an interesting one that allows us to use the uh, alias that are registered on the system. Very cool. And then our next example is going to be number five, set file output width for an entire scope. So this is working with the width formatting. And here we're going to see we have a log file. We have an out file width of 2000. It's a very large number, a line width of 2000 instead of one determined by the host console. So keeping in mind outfile is meant to capture the display. It's very GUI centric. It's what we see on the console. And this allows us to control the width of the file being created. And here we're kind of focusing in on environment variables, E and V colon. And we're going to do get service. And we're going to write that out to a file, log file append. So append. This is stacking a file that each time we execute, it's going to stack more rows to it uh, with no reset or overwriting, but kind of if we had multiple executions, the file will simply grow vertically. And then here we have get process format table and then a double greater than. Very interesting. And that's going to accomplish the exact same as the append over here. So the append and the double greater than, same format. The single greater than is more of an overwrite operation. Whereas, of course, this one's append because we do dash append. And then the double greater than is going to be append. So a very interesting example. We'll step through this, come over to our console. And really, it's kind of declaring the function and then executing it. I think in a case like this, what I might do is go ahead and step into it. That I think what I might do with this example is set a few breakpoints on the debug, and that'll allow us to work our way into the code a little more slowly and just check the results after each step. So we'll F5 to execute. It does say DBG with a light blue highlight, and it marks the line that we're currently on. So here we hit our breakpoint. And we can hover variables to see what the values are, or we can highlight them and press F8. So here we have our width at 2000, our log file declared. We're about to run get child item ENB colon, which are environment variables. Very good stuff. So we're going to go ahead and continue this forward. That's right. Yep. And now we'll do debug, run continue with F5. Yes. Run continue with F5, run continue. 
And then finally, it will remove the value and set the width back to its uh, standard. Now, on this particular script, if we see where the log file was written, that was, we want to open and inspect the log file with Notepad++. And what we're going to see is a very wide file. There's so much width to it with the 2,000 wide characters that the white space just spills off the page. And that's a lot easier to see in a utility like Notepad++. So here we see all of our data, but there's massive amounts of extra blank space from the 2,000 uh, fixed width white character, white space characters. Uh, but still kind of an interesting example, definitely some good things in here. I actually think that the 2000 width, probably not that practical for most use cases, but we do have something really cool happening with the double greater than and the single greater than. The single greater than is out file and double greater than is out file with append. So those are the same thing. I think it's a really good example to highlight the append operation. Those are the five examples on outfile. Useful command, we all should know. Thanks for watching.